And in fact, we stay with the topic of innovation now and exponential goals such as the ones that the international community signed up to both uh, with agenda, the 2030 agenda and with the Paris Climate Accord absolutely require transformational solutions. And in the area of science and technology, that means not just incremental innovation, but the kind of change that is sometimes referred to as a paradigm shift. The organization represented by our next speaker is working toward that kind of breakthrough. The acronym for its title, uh, ITER, stands for the way in Latin. And the destination towards which this way is heading is nothing less than commercially, commercially feasible fusion energy. It is my pleasure now to hand over to the Director General of the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER. It is a project backed by the EU, the US, China, India, Japan, Korea, and Russia. Please welcome Monsieur Bernard Bigot. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear Director, Deputy Director General, let me begin by thanking the International Atomic Energy Agency and Director General Yukika, Yukiya Amano for your kind invitation to participate in this scientific forum. I am deeply honored to be offered the opportunity to speak to you briefly about our progress on nuclear fusion and specifically the progress of the ITER project I am heading since 2015. For the past years, the IEA has been celebrating 60 years of Atom for Peace strategy. There was much to celebrate, resistance against nuclear weapons proliferation and technical cooperation providing peaceful nuclear technology around the world in many domains, including widespread electricity generation powered by nuclear fission. During the same decades, we have seen impressive global collaboration on another aspect of Atom for Peace to make hydrogen fusion power a reality. As you know, fusion is the most abundant source of energy in the universe, the energy of the sun and the stars. Today, as the global community tries to combat climate change, hydrogen fusion power is needed more than ever. Why? Fusion energy is desirable because of its near-perfect characteristics, suited to fulfill a significant part of the world energy supply in a sustainable way. As we fission, fusion release no greenhouse gas impacting climate. The fusion reactors will use at any time just about two or three grams of fuels made of deuterium and tritium, two hydrogen azotopes, as you know. So the fusion reaction is inherently safe. Unlike nuclear fission, there is no possibility of a meltdown. A fusion reactor does not produce any high, high activity, long lived radioactive waste and magnetic confinement fusion as envisioned in a stellarator or tokamak reactor does not provide an easy path to nuclear weapons. Best of all, raw material for fusion fuel are abundant. Deuterium is easily, easily extracted from water and lithium used in the tokamak to breed tritium is also plentiful considering the annual need of a large fusion power plant. This means we have millions of years of fuel supply for consumption of a global population of more than 8 billion of inhabitants of Earth. Furthermore, this fuel is accessible to every region and country and prevent any war-type competition to get it. This is why, with the ITER project, we have seven members representing 35 countries, China, all of Europe, India, Japan, Korea, Russia, and the United States spending more than 20 billion euros 
to demonstrate that fusion power is feasible for commercial energy generation. In 60 years of research, there have been hundreds of tokamaks, but to create and study a controlled burning plasma, as we say, or largely self-eating plasma, net producer of energy, requires us to build heater at industrial scale. The technology is extremely challenging. For example, you have to imagine component nearly 20 meters in size and weighting several hundred of tons that must fit together with a precision of less than one millimeter. The heater plasma will operate at 150 million degrees and the superconducting magnet controlling the plasma must be cooled down to minus 270 degrees a few meters away. So, ITER is a challenging global laboratory and industrial suppliers at the limits of technologies in cryogenics, electromagnets, vacuum system, material science, heat transfer, command and control, robotics, and many other disciplines. Naturally, every ITER member want to be involved to acquire the new knowledge and innovation that come with building ITER. It is why, under the ITER agreement signed in Paris in 2006, financial contributions to the project are largely made of in-kind contribution, more than 80% indeed, in the form of component. I am pleased to report that since early 2015, when we put in place the organizational reform to establish a project culture, we have stayed on scheduled and budget. Last November, we passed over the 50% mark of project completion for first plasma in 2025. After first plasma, we will have a 10 year stage approach of operation in further assembly to full fusion power in 2035. The, stand, the sustained performance is not easy, but as many external reviews have confirmed, the ITER project is now on track for success. Even we know there are still many technical and managerial challenges to overcome. Clearly, climate change is among the top challenges faced by human civilization, as it was uh, highlighted by uh, the previous speakers. If we are to succeed in addressing this challenge, we need to consider all forms of clean energy generation. Throughout my career, I have been an outspoken advocate of nuclear fission power. My native country, as you know, France, has benefited from many decades of safe, clean nuclear energy generation from its 58 nuclear power plants. I have also been an outspoken advocate of renewable energies. In this context, I do believe that fusion, fission, and renewable energy should be considered complementary options, with fusion as a baseload source of clean, safe, and virtually unlimited energy. The share between these options will depend on local situation and evolve with time in relation with resources available and competitiveness. I hope you will visit the ITER's website, www.iter.org, to learn more. We also have an ITER exhibition here this year between Building A and Building B, with a small walk-in theater where you can view the current status of project progress, construction, and manufacturing. And tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m., you are all invited on a site event on fusion energy for peace and sustainable development. It will be held in the space location in Building Ham on the ground level. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, uh, ITER Director General Bigot.